Hello everyone, welcome to a new tutorial! Yo! And today, Reverse Steve is going to show you how to set up a server on Windows for Minecraft version 1.21.3 Which was released, as of the filming of this video, 36 minutes ago Mm-hmm Indeed, yes! There's a new update, new video, 30 minutes, let's go! So yes, in this video, uh, I'm going to show you how can you get a Minecraft server on your computer so you can home host to your friends. So, to begin, you have to download the Minecraft 1.21.3 server jar uh, online. So, let's get started with that. So, first of all, open up your browser, then go on up search and search up Minecraft server jar 1.21.3. Here you'll be um, linked here. Up, uh, it still says 1.21.2, but if you go here, technically it will say 1.21.3. This keeps updating for the latest updates. So technically, if you want the latest update news, this might be the best way to go by, by it. Okay. Anyways, here you can see download Minecraft server 1.21.3.jar. So click this, and it's gonna start downloading. Uh, I would also like to note that you have to have uh, Java uh, downloaded on your computer and we have a video that we made just before this that you can go in the description to see how to download Java on your Windows computer so you can run this file. So uh, now we downloaded this file, here it is, and we're going to actually go on a dedicated uh, folder so we can have all the uh, Java um, a Java server folders that shows up on um, once you activate this folder. So now we just need to leave this and we want to go to our downloaded folders. Here it is. The server.jar. Up. So you just want to copy this and paste it somewhere where you want all the documents that will show up as soon as you activate this file. So once you have it somewhere you, where you want it to be um, just double click it and it's gonna start having new files here it is folders actually boom and it's gonna stop well, it just suddenly just stops why because you have eula.txt well so this eula.txt is actually a text file huh? and it says eula equals false what you have to simply do is change this to true. So, here's go. EULA equals true. Once done, just exit and save. And now when you're going to go back to it, I'll just be saying EULA equals true. Then, if you want to edit your world here, just go to your server properties. And here you have all the properties of your server. Right? All you simply do, you can just like change your world here to like have its own custom name. You can have a seed. So before you actually activate the program, if you want to have a custom world, just make sure to change it. Well, here, uh, here, just for the sake of this tutorial, we won't be putting a custom world. Uh, M O T D. You know, you can just put anything you want. So if I put text here, you'll see this thing come back later. Uh, the port here, call it a port. We will show you how to port for it a bit later, so uh, keep in mind this is the port that uh, people on um, uh, on like Bedrock or Java, if you have like a Bedrock and you want to keep the same uh, I IP, you will have to just change this in your geyser, which is like a whole other thing. But for Java, some IP addresses need uh, this to be behind it, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so if it doesn't let you join on like doesn't let you your friends uh, join your server Just make sure to give them this behind like for example, it will look like up. There you go and that, that, that port will just be whatever is here Just make sure this if it doesn't let you connect you just put this behind your IP address and here you have spawn protection, submission distance, view distance, you know, you nice and high. And I just, you, you can just change different aspects of your server in this file. And of course, make sure to save it. Uh, there you go. Um, then, once everything is good, just simply 
press Server Jar once again, and it's gonna activate a few, like the second step, which is actually the server creation. So here it is. It will, here it's gonna tell you: Do you want public and private access to this app? As other people will be joining the server, you will have to press Allow. There you go. And now you have this. This is called the console and a bunch of new files and folders. Just whitelist, you know, just here's, here's your world file. There you go. Uh, and here also it's done, right? So my server is now done, right? It's been created and it's now running. So to test if everything worked, first of all, you want to make sure that you can join your own server. So here we know this is 1.21.3. So we have to open up Minecraft uh, and check the Servers tab to make sure the server is active. And if you ask how can you find your IP address to join, there's multiple ways of doing it. Uh, the first way of doing it is by just having a null IP address, aka 0.0.0.0, if you're hosting this on your own computer. So in this case, I can just join the server with this IP address because I'm the one hosting it on this computer. But obviously people don't have access to your computer, so how will they be able to join on a local network this time? Well, this is not portaling yet, this is being local. The way you do it is by going to just, um, settings, then you go to your Wi-Fi settings, then you go to your uh, properties of whatever network you're connected to, and here you have all the IP addresses, but you'll be interested of this one, this IPv4 one, and also Minecraft that's open on me. So I guess we can actually start doing. We can we can we can try out the uh, uh, 0 0.0.0.0 one. There you go. Well, so this is for me for this computer. You can see text. Remember this one? Yep. So we have properties, but I'm I'm able to join this, but only me. So how can people in my own network? Okay, this is not outside for now. This is just an own network. For other computers to join, you have to use this one. Well, you just have to use uh, the IPv4 address you have right here. And I will let you add another server. Right? So just add, add server up. Here it is. There you go. So this one, I can join. This one, people on my network can join it. So let's just join the server real quick. There you go, there you go, let's do G, there you go, go and leave, and there you go. So this is how we make this on our computer. So that's step one for this server creation. Here we can see in our console, uh, my text, G, lost connection because I disconnected. And that's basically how you do this on this and to your network. But now, how do you do it if other people in the world or your friends that are not connected to your Wi-Fi joins? Watch this. So, here you just want to stop your server. Well, just, just keep this in the back of your mind to stop it. And you want to go to your router settings. So, how do you go to your router settings? Well, there's a couple ways of doing it. The first easiest way is by going back to these network settings and going down. And now, this one. For me, this works. So, this is my computer's IP address, and this is my home IP address, my router IP address. By going on this, up, I get sent to this, okay? So this is the simplest way of doing it, but I'm aware this might not always work for some people. There's always some cases. Uh, the uh, other way you can do this is by just knowing whatever you have. So here you can see I'm on Bell. So you do Bell, up, router, IP. And on the internet, you'll be able to see, there you go, my router IP, router IP, right? so if you just type in your router just name, you, you will be able to find whatever it's using, and you'll be sent to this page. And with this page, it's different for everybody. It, it's completely different for everybody, but it has similar names, so let's just go through this page. So from here we have... Uh, your home network and tool and settings, whatever, this will always be different. So make sure to consult whatever router you have and go for specific tutorials on how to port forward. But here, if you're able to go on these advanced tools, well, you will be able to see 
kind of the general idea of what you have to go and look for now. So, here, like going on advanced tools and settings, okay, it's gonna ask you for your administrator password, or maybe no, but most likely yes, just because this is a port forwarding, so. If you have a setting that asks you for your um, administrator password, most likely you want the correct uh, setting. Okay, so once we're here, uh, it will just send me that, whatever. Um, you have all these settings, uh, but you want to find a setting called port forwarding. Uh, sometimes I can have a different name. Uh, just if you see port, that's most likely where you want to go. So you want to click that. And then he is going to give you some um, a method of creating rules or port forwarding methods. Or like I said, they keep using different names. So just add something. <laughs> so word forwards. Yeah, it just it's very different for every single thing. I tried doing this in Australia. It's different too. It's very special. So it's, this is this is the type of stuff where you can't really know. So in this case, I'll I'll just say this. <laughs> so. Um, if you have a blank slot like this, this is most likely for the name, so this is for the name. Protocol, you have one, two, these are universal, but just do both. Internal port, this is where we go back to the original thing, yeah? So, we just close all this, and we want to find da -da -da, servers of properties, and this will be your port. Now, you can change this, just... That's for specific reasons if you want to change it, if you really have a server on your own network, but in this case, uh, most of you don't, so you just keep the default one. And what you want is that uh, you just kind of paste it in there, right? so it would just want to say one sometimes, there you go, you get back, here it is, here you go. You just want to fill up these four slots, or two, because you might have two, or might have four. <laughs> so uh, in this case, just fill up all them by the same ports. And my router has two options, so it's select a device or enter an IP address. I did not know this was a thing, so let us do the most common way of doing it. Uh, to enter your IP address, it's uh, quite easy. It's basically this one, right? It's the one where everyone on my local network can join, right? Because everyone, basically, this is myself, no one can find me. Uh, but this is everyone on, which is connected to my network can see my device, my device being these numbers. So this is how you're able to join on a, a server if you're connected to the network already. But in this case, uh, here we're talking about port forwarding, so it's not going to be this case. So what you want is just copy these numbers and fill up the blanks. Like I said, it will be most likely in a different... Uh, Okay, I actually removed really that, that's pretty cool. Uh, 2 and 25, okay, 2, 25. And there you go, that's my IP address, that's my computer. So all we do is create, and now name on both, fill in with all the same ports, my computer, and this is I guess. Uh, and it just says save, make sure to save that. And now this is activated. So, what you want to do next, you're not done. You want to find your global IP. So, we have ring 1, computer, ring 2, my network, ring 3, global. And global is, you need to find your public IP address, but this is your private. The public IP address is in many different sites, but just do, uh, what's my IP, uh, I do dot org, because it's it's a good site, so what's my IP.org? And this is the one you're looking for. Well, this is the third ring. When we go in Minecraft, let's add this up, text, and now the third ring is complete. What does this mean? It means that now we're gonna go to in this, there you go, so, there you go, um, uh, this we received being in Latvia, so that's quite uh, far away, so I tried to join the server, and there you go, it's gonna, you, you should be able to join in a couple seconds, no problem, okay, 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 and there you go, so now, 
if I go back to my original spot, up, and go on the server, doesn't matter which one I'm using, I should be able to see. There you go. I will see. So, there you go. So, oh. <laughs> I don't think streaming is giving you more speech of your, uh, your thing, is it? Oh, right, it's fixed. Okay. Anyways. Uh, so, yeah. So, that's how you play with friends in the other side of the world using port forwarding. But, as we seen early on, there is something called uh, just dynamic IP. So let me just get out of Minecraft real quick, there you go. Um, as we see, this... Let's get out of Minecraft, as I said. As we see, this was my IP address a couple minutes ago. Um, and it got changed. So, uh, what you want to do, there is two ways of going to this, huh? Two oh, it's simple ways. You can do the static IP thing, but that's like a whole different thing with like firewalls and stuff. But like, to keep it simple, there's two ways of doing it. First way is just simply updating your friends like, okay, my IP has changed, here's a new IP. But if you have a bigger SMP server or whatnot, you might want to find a better way, which in this case are domains, okay? I just do domain, name, sheep, whatever. Um, Things like this, right? Domain registers are methods that you can use to register a domain, right? So for example, you can use my SMP dot whatever dot com, whatever. And you have something called DNS, right? And in this DNS, this image actually shows it very well, um, you have a records, right? So you simply do type a record. This is for everything. All domain registers will show you this, but you just do a record host you put your whatever you want to put in there so for example it can be like um smp dot whatever nctest.info right? so host smp then you have the domain nctest.info and value will be this will be your new ip so now you can give people smp dot nctest.info and then you can just go in the back end, change this number whenever this updates, and then people won't, won't even notice it changed because they used something which updates, but it doesn't update. It just asks, okay, smp.nc.info, uh, uh, what IP, and the update IP will be here. It doesn't keep the IP, so it just keeps updating. So if you just change this, it's pretty simple, pretty fast. Uh, some domains can be quite cheap. You can other ones could be more expensive, but most of them, it's around mm, five to twelve dollars, I guess, uh, per year to get a domain. But that's if you have like a bigger SMP or whatever, you just that's how you're gonna be updating the domain. So that's how that's how you do it. Pretty simple. And yes, that's how you can play uh, up on a SMP or any type of server with your friends or a bigger SMP in the whole entire world. There you go.